basically today we're going to start doing a bit of potting mix. We're just going to start with something simple which is basically 50% soil and 50% compost. And you can mix it with your hands and you can make it with your spade. But at the end of the day, you will find that you'll get this potting mix that is nice, light, so that when the roots grow, they can penetrate easily. And when water goes through, it can drain nicely because if it's too, if it sort of clumps up and water cannot penetrate through it, then all the water gets stuck and all your roots will get waterlogged and your plant will die. So then after this is done, all you need to do is to start germinating and as long as your pot has holes, you can use it already. So what you do is just, when you put it in, you shouldn't compact it too much. So you put it in and then you let it sink down, push it down a bit. But you shouldn't like force it down because then that means you compact the soil and the roots will have a hard time. And then you can already start putting your seeds inside. All you need to do is just make a little hole and then later you can plant your seed inside. So that's example A. Example B is also seedling trays that you can get from the nursery. And the whole point of this is so that you can plant out a lot of seeds at one go, care for them in the nursery, so, and you make sure that they survive the hard stage of being a baby, and then only plant them out in the garden. So you can use other materials as seedling trays. You can also use your unused egg cartons. And thirdly, it's actually something else, which we have called the peat pellet. So this is a peat pellet, and it's actually made of compressed peat. It has a biodegradable cloth over it. So what happens is you soak it in water and it'll expand. Mm -hmm. It can take up to seven times its volume. So it takes about five minutes to expand. So you can find these peat pellets in our seed boxes as well. In the seed box, there are six different types of seeds and it comes with the pellets so that people can just start growing so, instantly. And what else do you have in your boxes? We have quite a variety of seeds. So there's 18 different types of seeds. Mm. Some annual, some perennial. So they come with the peat pellets as well. So in the stir-fry box, there's mostly like uh, leafy greens and the oolong box is stuff that you eat raw, like your cucumber, your lettuce, your kacang bottle, there's coriander, there's basil, there's a bit of chilli. And in the curry box, it's um, they've got beans, French bean and long bean, they've got brinjal, bird's eye chilli, which is your chilli padi, uh, round brinjal. So this is meant to be a box where you also can save your seat. So each box also comes with information on how to save your seat. There are instructions which correspond to each specific um, seat variety. Mm -hmm. um, so if you open your envelope, mm -hmm. uh, they also have instructions on how to grow on each of the packs. Mm -hmm. So have a look at the seats. Let's take a look at the seat size. So when planting in these um, peat pellets, important to note the seat size. If the seat's very big, you only put one right. or two. But if it's very small seat, then you can sprinkle a few, I guess. So first thing to do is make a little indent. With some of the pellets, they already have indents. Yeah. So you just want to make an indent with a piece of stick or a pen. Or... So you can begin putting your seeds in. So then once you put your seeds in, you can just sort of cover it with a little bit of the growing material. And then you can mark it. And then you also always want to put the date. Mm. Mm. Yeah, and that's pretty much it. So then when they grow, mm -hmm. they look like this. <laughs> <laughs> After this sort of grown, this is about two to three weeks old. Since we put in a couple of seeds, some have grown two, some have grown one. So before you transfer them out, you have to, this is a bit of the sad part, but you have to only let one survive in order for it to get the best chance. Mm. You don't want it to compete with each other. Mm. So say here there's two bendies, you want to kill the weaker one by snipping it at the shoot here. Don't try to pull it out because you don't want to injure the root of mm. the other one. How do you know which one is the weaker one? You can kind of see one is taller than the other one. So this one obviously had shot first, this one shot second. So you just always want to keep the strongest one alive and yeah. going. So once they've reached this stage, you can put them straight out into the soil. Preferably, you should water them every day. This is planting by seed, but there are other ways to grow food as well, which is through propagation. And in the tropics, there are quite a lot of plants that you can grow through cuttings. Have a look at some of the plants in our garden, and then we'll do some propagation together. So we finished cutting it and so now we're going to show you how to cut it and propagate. So let's say for this kind of stem, 
what you do is you cut off all the leaves and you cut off all the side shoots. So once you have your stem cutting already, ideally it would have like five nodules, so one, two, three, four, five. And then you just basically add some water to your container. You can add it until the point of the second nodule. And then you just put it inside there. You leave it. So after this, when they have grown roots and you can see that some leaves are already forming, then you can transfer them into a pot or into soil. So basically once it's rooted already, you make a hole in your pot again. So then you would just put it in the middle. Make sure you put the two nodules in. Pat around it. Make sure it's tight. You don't press it down next to it, but you press around, around it. it yeah. And then the next most important step is to water it. <laughs> <laughs> There comes a time when sometimes the pests just become a bit overbearing. So what you need to do is you need to look into certain natural pest repellents and we use something called a neem spray. And with this neem spray, you have to dilute it down because it's a bit strong. Technically, this kind of sprays you can make yourself at home and it's not so toxic because the chemical ones is based on other chemical properties and stuff like that. This one is actually just made from neem leaves that you can find in some neighbourhoods, even some shops that sell neem oil. So it's a more natural, natural alternative to commercial chemical-based pest repellents and fertilizers and chemicals and all that.